That's another Shao Kahn's crimes. Round one. Fight. Scorpion is the best character in Mortal Kombat. That fact is obvious. This hell spawn ninja is a force to be reckoned with. Brought back from the pits of hell to take vengeance on the assassins responsible for slaughtering his entire clan. Kind of like God of War, but ninjas and it was his whole clan. It wasn't just his family and he didn't actually do it. Well, maybe it's not like God of War, but you get it. But in a game filled with all kinds of crazy fighters, being able to be such a standout like Scorpion is is no small feat. So what would it take to fight just like Scorpion himself? Well, you have come to the right place because in this episode of Fight Like a Superhero, I'm not only gonna break down his fighting style and explain what it's made of, but I'm also gonna show you how to train just like him. In fact, I have my good friend, Instructor Bensei, who is going to tag in and teach you how to build and use your own rope dart yourself. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's the only ninja wearing aviators and a super hat, and welcome to the Modern Ninja channel. I know we can't wait to jump into the breakdown, so let's get right into it. Canonically, Scorpion is actually given a martial art already. It's called Hapkido. It's a hybrid Korean martial art that primarily serves as a self-defense style, employing all kinds of techniques from joint locks, grappling and throws, to kicks, punches, and any other kind of strike you can think of. They also spend time training with various weapons as well. Most Notably, the knife, the cane, the staff, the nunchucks, sword, and even firearms are part of their arsenal. Yeah, I bet many of you guys didn't know that because I didn't until researching for this video. Plus, I know that there is an entire generation of kids that grew up thinking Hapkido is full of crap just because the Power Rangers decided to make hip Hapkido. But I swear, it is the real thing and absolutely a force to be reckoned with. And to be able to last through both world wars, it better be. And for Scorpion, this style makes so much sense. Scorpion is an incredibly well-balanced and versatile fighter, just like the art that this is designed for. But it isn't going to be quite enough on its own. Like anyone that watches this series will know, characters almost never have just one martial arts fighting style that they use in their combat or design. And Scorpion is a legit ninja, like he's from a whole clan. It's actually the whole reason he's mad at Sub-Zero because he believes that Sub-Zero is responsible for killing his entire ninja clan. So obviously he's going to need to know ninjutsu as well. For those that don't know, ninjutsu is very different different from most other forms of martial arts. It focuses on strategy, tactics, and guerrilla warfare over a straightforward quote-unquote honorable combat, finding ways to win by any means necessary. And Scorpion is definitely the guy that gives off the vibe that he believes there's only two types of fighters in this world losers and cheaters and i'm truly about it now if you're enjoying the video please hit me up with that hbo special and help a brother out by hitting the like button and commenting on this video it would really be helpful but next we're going to dip into kendo scorpion is no slouch with a katana so of course we had to get some of the best katana training that you could possibly find and that's going to be kendo or kenjutsu if you go back in history which you would have to go really far back because kenjutsu is one of the oldest sword martial art styles in existence so you know it must be doing something right in fact kendo is still practiced to this day for combat in 2023 so this one is obviously a no-brainer for scorpion and lastly we are here for what we've all been waiting for you need to learn some rope dart rope dart is a traditional chinese flexible weapon usually 10 to 16 feet long allowing the user to throw the dart out at a long range towards the target often using it to pull the target towards the user to choke them out with the rope or deal with them in any other various ways i mean scorpions get over here is legendary for a reason get over here and if you really wanted to channel your inner scorpion, you will introduce poi into your rope dart training. Poi artists are able to not only shoot and spin rope darts, but also light it on fire. And you can't tell me that doesn't sound like an absolute blast. <laughs> blast. Being able to not only hit your target, but light them on fire from a distance sounds literally like it's out of the Mortal Kombat game. Like, 
It's absolutely wild. But to be honest with you guys, rope darts is one of the few weapons I just really haven't had any real training in. So I got a surprise guest not only to show you how to use rope dart, but show you how you can make one at your house right now. So without further ado, Instructor Bensei, take it away, my man. Hey there, lovely. So the modern ninja has asked me to help you all learn how to fight like a superhero. And since you can tell that my favorite is definitely Batman, uh, I figured we could learn how to fight with a meteor hammer today. So if you want to go ahead and grab your meteor hammers, Oh yeah, you probably don't have. Let's start with making a practice meteor hammer. Let's do that. Go ahead and get yourself some rope, two socks you really don't care about anymore, and whole coffee beans. Filling the first sock up with about six to eight ounces of coffee beans, go ahead and give it a feel test. Ooh! Now you're gonna go ahead and tie that sock off however you'd like. Just make sure it's nice and snug and make sure that it doesn't look like it's gonna come undone because Man, that's not fun. Whole bunch of coffee beans everywhere. Anyway, go ahead and take the excess and just wrap around the sock for extra measure. And then you're gonna go ahead and put that sock inside of the next sock. Yep, sockception. I find that sometimes it's hard to get the sock in the inside all the way down to the bottom, so grabbing it by the neck and just whipping the sock around works pretty well. And then we're gonna set it aside for later. Let's get the rope. With the rope, we're gonna go ahead and tie what's called a bowline knot. Some people say bowline, I really don't care just as long as it keeps everything in place. I find that bowline knots work really, really well for keeping everything nice and snug. That being said, knot tying is not the easiest thing for me. I'm very dyslexic, so it makes it really difficult to keep track of all the pieces. That's rough, buddy. Hopefully I made this in such a way that it's pretty easy to follow along, and if you need to, pause the video as many times as you want and just double check against what my knot looks like versus what yours looks like. Anyway, once you have it all cinched up, you should be able to pull on the top and the bottom of the knot, right? Those two pieces of line, and you should have a nice little loop left in the center. That's what we're gonna loop the sock neck through. Now, you can tie that sock on however you want, but if you're willing to be patient and struggle a little bit through the elastic trying to pull your knot undone at every single step of the way, another bowline knot actually seems really, really secure, and I have some practice darts that I've made like this that have survived for years now, and I've survived for years actually hitting people and things and haven't come undone. So this is the best way I've found, but if you find another way that works best for you, go ahead and use it. At the end of the day, you just need to make sure it doesn't come off the rope. Moving on to our last piece, we are gonna go ahead and take everything off to the side and just work with the other end. We're gonna make another bowline knot, and this is how we're gonna make our slip knot so that we can stick our wrist through that and attach it to our wrist so it doesn't go flying off if we accidentally let go. The anchor, which is what we're creating right now, is gonna go onto our non-dominant hand as our spot of control. Our lead hand is called our lead hand, not because it's in front, but because it's the hand that leads the weight. Anyway, if you do this right, you should be able to hook both thumbs in, stick your arms nice and wide out, and it should just barely hang up off the floor. If you find that it's still a little bit too long, you can go ahead and pull out some extra line, double it over, and feed your hand back through to shorten the rope. I did it three times here just to show how much it takes away from the overall length, and as you can see, it made it significantly shorter. Also, I'm gonna use this really nice freeze frame to go ahead and show you guys the basic terms and terminology of a meteor hammer or rope dart, take a second, memorize some pieces, and then feel free to move on. Okay, so now that I have my practice meteor hammer, how do I use it? Well, at first it's pretty simple. Just move it around your body and don't hit yourself. But a little bit more instruction might be useful. So let's talk about some basic planes. Specifically, we're gonna start out with wheel plane. So I'm gonna start with my anchor foot forward. It's called my anchor foot because it's the side that my anchor hand is on and my lead foot back. Lead side because it's the side that leads the weight. It tells it where to go. Makes sense, right? Anchor foot forward, lead foot back. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a simple down spin. This is called wheel plane because if I think about my chest being the axle of a wheel, right? This comes out and this should be spinning off the side of me. Now I have two different ways that I can hold on to this. Thumb in or fingers in, right? Called a pinch grip or an overhand grip. Both work well. You'll see me doing overhand grip a lot. It's just my preference. Feel free to play with what feels right for you. Anyway, starting in wheel plane, I just want you to start with a basic down spin. It's called a down spin because it looks like, as I look forward, it's spinning down. I know, crazy, right? Just wait, it gets better. So when I want to switch directions, I'm going to do something called a stall, which is taking it back and letting it slow down and then switching directions. And now it is something called an up spin because you guessed it, it looks like it's going sideways. No, up, it looks like it's spinning up. Starting in this nice pretty wheel plane, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take both of my feet 
pivot on them in place, not stepping, and I'm going to rotate toward where the weight is spinning, putting my chest in front of the weight. And now we are in wall play, because if you imagine, this is like a wall in front of you. And all I want you to do is practice shifting from wheel plane to wall plane. You feel real crazy, stall it out, change directions, back to wheel plane. Really useful drill for working on this stuff because keeping your planes flush and true is extremely important. Find a nice flat surface, get as close as you can, and if you hear it scrape the wall, stand there until you fix it. The next thing we're gonna learn is how to shift between the two of those while actually stepping. So starting in a downspin and wheel plane, it should be on your lead side. I am going to take the weight before I step over to the other side of my body. Practice this a couple of times first. This is called a weave. It's taking it from one side of my body to the other. And I would imagine most of you have already done this by now. As soon as you made it, you probably started going Aah! I'm gonna start in a downspin. I'm gonna take it to the other side of my body. And as I do, I'm going to step that lead foot, which is at the back, I know, forward and around my anchor foot, the one that's forward. Stepping into wall plane. From right here, I am going to pivot my feet in place and turn this into anchor wheel plane. It's called anchor wheel plane because it is on my anchor side. I'm gonna take that anchor hand that's holding onto the tail of the rope and either tuck it behind me or bring it in close to me. Just get the tail of the rope out of the way. From right here, I am gonna take it back over to my lead side and step again into wall plane and then pivot in place. Congratulations, you've learned how to step through wall plane into wheel plane and wheel plane into wall plane. Isn't that nifty? Make sure that as you're going through this drill, you are turning all the way into wall plane, then shifting to wheel plane, not doing half of both at the same time. You will thank yourself later for the work you put in now. Now, the last bit of knowledge I'm gonna impart onto you are some shots. Specifically, I'm gonna teach you one shot that I really like, and that is a knee shot. So, what I need to do is I need to start in a down spin in wheel plane. I need it over on my lead side, anchor foot forward. And the first thing that I'm gonna practice is bringing my lead leg, you know, the one that's back, I know, again, confusing, bring that up, tucking the foot in close to my body, pointing my knee out at a 45 degree angle, and keeping my balance, just right like that. If I leave my foot out, the rope gets caught on it, and that's no good, so I need to tuck that foot in, right in here. From the side, I should see something like this, okay? Keep that knee flush. I should be able to rest a plate on top of it and not drop the food that's on that plate. Once I can do that, I wanna practice taking my lead hand and bringing it down to touch right by the end of my knee. This will make sense in a second, but we call these our little connections. They help tremendously with doing my work. Last part of this is I need to have a down spin and wheel plane. And all I'm gonna do is pick that knee up and bring my hand down to touch that spot on my knee. And if I do this right, it should just want to launch itself. You're looking for one full rotation and you are going to release it at, let's see, the arms on the clock, da, 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 around 10 o'clock, right? So as it's spinning right here, bring it down to my knee, bring my knee up to it, tuck that foot in and release. If it goes high, you release too soon. If it goes low, you release too late. Let's see what that looks like from the front. Right here, down spin, wheel plane. That's my shot, that's what I'm looking for. So practice that for a little bit and see what you find. Take your time, work on these slowly, and if you feel really crazy, you can try it on your anchor knee. Ooh. Also, this is a great time to practice your reels for my overachievers. Once I send the dart out, I'm gonna use my anchor hand to pull the weight back to me, pulling it through my lead hand as I do. A huge thank you to Modern Ninja for inviting me out to teach you all how to fight like superheroes. I cannot thank him enough, and I cannot recommend you following him enough. Please make sure you show some love and support by subscribing. And if you find the work that I do interesting, you can find me at Instructor Ben Say on TikTok, Instagram, and on YouTube. Although I'm working on making the presence a little more known on the last one. Thank you all so much for your time and your energy and commitment to doing the cool things that other people just watch in the movies. Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Just wanted to thank Ben one more time for helping out with this video. I'm definitely not a rope guy myself, so I absolutely couldn't have done a scorpion video justice without him. So make sure you show him the support and follow him in the links down below if you don't already. He has like over a million subscribers, so you probably do, but just in case, go check him out. And if you want me to do a specific other character, leave a comment down below letting me know which one you want me to see. Maybe it's another Mortal Kombat character, maybe it's a different character entirely. I'm already working on some suggestions that you guys have sent in, like right now, like they're literally being written. 
um, probably as this video is posted. So definitely let me know what you guys want to see. But until next time, my name's DJ Moore, this is Modern Ninja, and I'm out. If you like this video, check out this one about Street Fighter's Jury, or this other one you do think you'll like as well. Either way, I'll see you guys in the next one. It flow like water, state of mind, got me going farther than I ever thought I could have been. Gotta grab a sheet of paper as you know I got the pin. Anybody want to smoke your whole career be looking grim. Out here flashing chains while your boy been in the gym. Watch me spitting flames while the frogs try to...